All right, folks, thanks for tuning in to the Fantastic Fantasy Show. I'm Wolfgang, and this is Jimmy. And if you're watching on YouTube, which you obviously are, please subscribe to our station channel for further updates and shows. Let's get right to it. We're going to cover the all-important fantasy baseball draft and, the draft and some draft strategies. It's very important to at least get a solid core during the draft that you can build around during the season if you have to. One quick way to do that is just basic research, maybe get like a fantasy magazine. Most fantasy magazines have at least two to three years of past stats, predictions, sleepers, um, pretty much everything you need can be found in a magazine. Now that you mention it, do you have my fantasy magazine? Look around online. There's a vast amount of information uh, relevant to fantasy baseball online. Uh, say you don't have time to go pick up a magazine, uh, you can you can find information online relatively easy. Another good idea is check into basic spring training. It's a good way to keep up to date what your favorite players are doing. Are they hot? Are they cold? Maybe Jose Reyes hurt his hamstring the preseason again, and he's going to miss for our season. Might definitely change your uh, ideas on where you're going to draft. Okay, moving on to mock drafts. Mock drafts will help you familiarize yourself with the system that you're going to be using during your draft. Uh, that way, when it's your turn to pick, or if you're looking for a certain player that's not right on the screen, uh, you won't panic when, it, when it's your turn to pick. Uh, this will also help you familiarize yourself uh, and show you when certain players are going, uh, give you an idea of what positions are more in demand than others. Yeah, mock drafts go way to train. Uh, do one or two. Heck, do five. Why not? It's just research. Because, for example, you don't want to be this guy. What's up, man? Yep, drafted. Yep. Dude, round six, four Orioles. Yeah, they're all there, I don't know. <laughs> what? Nah. Yeah, get ready to lose, buddy. You're going to lose. Woo-woo! Woo-woo! Listen, most people have a favorite team. It is not a smart move to load up with guys that are on your favorite team. You end up reaching for a guy out of position and it messes you up. He won't be worth the value that you draft him for. Yeah, for example, the Red Sox are a good team. A lot of fan base. What do you do when they get rained out one week? Exactly. You have no points and you're screwed. Do not, do not have more than three guys from one team. Next up is your draft strategy. Now you want to have a strategy before your draft and you want to have it written down in front of you. Um, draft strategies will keep you from panicking and it'll kind of give you an idea of what your team is going to look like before, uh, before you draft. Um, whether you want to go all power, you want to do heavy pitching, whether you want speed guys, uh, outfielders, you know, it just depends. That is your strategy. You have to know how your league is set up though. That will make a, a huge difference in who you want to pick and what your strategy will be. So make sure you know how your league is set up and how your points will be assessed. Most magazines will have a list of what players are best each position. It's good to have a good idea of who you want your position. And also, the magazine's helpful. If that guy you really wanted gets taken, what are you going to do? You all have a backup plan right there in your paper. Basically, on draft day, this piece of paper is the most important thing you have. Position scarcity. Uh, posi position scarcity will tell you uh, what's available for each position by position. Uh, this year in particular the shortstop position is a little uh, a little short. There's only uh, about one or two guys right at the top. Hanley Ramirez is the obvious overall pick and then you know you have Jeter you know and then uh, a plethora of mid-tier guys, second tier, third tier, fourth tier. So uh, if you're not getting your guy you just need to know who is there and where to draft them. If, if the shortstop position is scarce and you feel like you need one of the top guys, then that's what you got to go for first, or you know, your first or second round pick. For example, let's say you see Derek Lee on the board. You want him, you like him. But everyone else has first baseman. Maybe you can wait another round or two, just maybe, give a little more time to go. Another play. good strategy is to know who the other guys are picking. Uh, say, for instance, we just talked about shortstops and the position scarcity. Uh, say uh, Tula Whiskey take is taken in the second round, you know, 20, 20 second pick, something like that. Then you have the opportunity, since you know he's off the board, 
you have the opportunity to pick a couple other guys from different positions because you know that another shortstop won't have the same value in those rounds. You'll be getting better players, and you'll still be able to get your, your shortstop, but in a, l a little bit okay, later. So we've covered year. most of the pre-draft stuff. Let's get to what goes on during the draft. As with any competition, the other guys that are in the draft board are going to be doing a little smack talk, a little trash, trash talk, trying to get in your head and fill your head up with stuff that isn't true. Uh, just stay focused and you know keep your papers in front of you. Know what your strategy is and be confident. Yeah, focus is the key, folks. Don't let the wife and kids, phone, TV, etc. bother you. No. Not right now. I, I, you know, maybe three hours. I don't know, okay? No, no, you, you relax. No, hey, I, I am very relaxed right now. This is how I relax, okay? Okay? You, know, you just get off my back, okay? You know, I, I hate you too. I hate you too, okay? And for example, don't pick guys just to upset your other fancy players. Keep, keep your strategy. Don't take Papelbon because your buddy who's a Boston fan wants Papelbon. Also, have some guys in mind for the last two or three rounds of the draft. This is always a good strategy. Maybe some reliable veterans or some, some young players who are making the squad with, with a lot of upside, Jason Hayward or Strasburg or anybody like that. Those young guys that, that are coming in hot, the young prospects. Uh, it's always a good idea to wait until the later rounds just in case they, they don't make the squad or they get sent back down or whatever seems to happen. But if they have a chance... Right, last but not least, fantasy baseball is for fun first. Have fun to smack board. It's fun to connect with your friends and family. And also, you listen to the experts all day long, but we don't know what we're talking about. It's all just advice. It's fantasy. You never know what's going to happen. That's why they play the game. Exactly, right. So take all the numbers and the advice and the projections, but play with your gut a little bit. Uh, and don't worry if you think you made a mistake. Sometimes the mistakes end up being the best thing that could have happened in that moment. All right, coming up next, uh, we have an interview with uh, Bill, last year's champion with the Rolling Crows. Uh, I'm very excited. Oh, I, I, I know you are. Yes. Well, folks, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. All right, folks, welcome back to the Fantastic Fantasy Show. And as promised, we have an interview with Bill of the Rolling Crows, our 2009 It's Baseball champion. Welcome, Bill. Hey, yeah. Jimmy. So good welcome to meet you, me. sir. It's, it's a pleasure. Oh, seriously. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I guess, Bill, my first question is, um, there's certain demons... I'm slaying when I'm playing fantasy baseball. What demons are you trying to slay?